G'day, my name is Daniel McMahon. I've been running my own plumbing business for about 10 years and I've been plumbing for about 20. Um, what I'm going to show you in this video is how to replace a tempering valve. As you could see, the first thing I did was turn the water off at the water meter and that's very important, obviously. Uh, and then as you can see here, we're looking at an older tempering valve and this one is installed actually on the wall you don't normally see these a lot anymore a lot of the time they are installed in the piping on the side of the hot water service although i'll have to admit that you do see these every now and then and everything is exactly the same so the first thing you do is you obviously take the uh, water off sorry what am i talking about i don't mean water i'm actually talking about the nuts on the tempering valve itself now a lot of them will come with these nylon olives and what they do is they act as like a compression on the pipe and that compression stops any water from escaping out the edges so as you can see you can use a shifter just like i have there and you can work the nylon olive off um, and then obviously you'd be able to get the nut off. Now you can see, have your first glimpse there of the new tempering valve. You can see where hot and cold is marked on the tempering valve and you want to make sure that you're lining that up properly. Obviously we want to make sure the hot is coming in from the top on this one and the cold is coming in from the bottom. So we want to be 100% sure that we definitely line up the water in the right direction. If you don't, it will actually not work properly at all. So you will know straight away. Now you can use two shifters to do this. Um, do, up, do it up by hand as tight as you can first, to save a bit of time, and then obviously just continue on. Now you can see on the tempering valve itself that you've got two nuts there. So the one closest to the middle that's actually a filter inside there. It's a, like a mesh and it's an easy way to, it's also a loose nut, which I should probably mention. It's a very easy way to actually um, clean out the tempering valve. A lot of the time with tempering valves, if you've got a rusty hot water service or a very d dirty water supply, you can get a bit of, um, dirt and debris stuck in that in that filter there and when you've got that dirt and debris stuck then what you need to be doing is uh, taking it off and cleaning that filter out every now and then as you can see there again just working off the other nylon olive now the one pipe that goes into the wall is actually the tempered line so the tempering valve works by letting hot water come in through the top pipe and then cold water coming in through the bottom. And then what it does is it mixes the water up inside the tempering valve and creates a 50 degree solution of hot water. Now in Australia, we need to have legally 50 degrees in the entire house. Uh, and depending on the circumstances, sometimes 45 degrees, whether it's a aged care facility or a hospital or something like that. So sometimes you'll find that there's two lines going into the brick wall. Um, some houses have uh, very hot water or what we would call 65 degree water at um, the kitchen and laundry sink and then the bathrooms would be tempered down to 50 degrees. Now, obviously if you've got that set up, you're gonna have two pipes going in. So you need to be aware of where your tempered line is just to make sure you don't make any mistakes. It's very important to make sure that you don't have a very 65 degrees coming out in the bathrooms because in all honesty, uh, that's very, very hot. It actually takes three seconds to get third degree burns um, at 65, and at 50 degrees, it actually takes 10 minutes 
to get their degree burns. So it is a very important thing. Now I know some people out there really like their hot showers, um, but in all honesty, I can tell you right now, there's no way known you would be able to stand under a shower at 50 degrees. It is, it feels like you're on fire. Absolutely scalding hot. Now the reason that I've left this uh, top hotline um, till last was that I think from memory there were solar panels on the roof and I knew that I was going to have to do this one in a hurry because I didn't want all the solar panels slowly dripping out of this pipe. Although, saying that, when you have a closed line, so there's nothing open on the other side of the solar panels, then it's a high chance you won't have any dripping. And that is because uh, it's almost like if you have a hose and you have it under the water, and when you put your thumb on it and pull it out of the water, that hose is completely full. Uh, but then as soon as you take your thumb off, it all empties out. So it's exactly the same concept. So you want to make sure all of your nuts are nice and tight. And there will be a part where you'll need the two shifters so that you can make sure that there's absolutely no movement, everything's super tight. Um, because that secondary loose nut, it can move occasionally, especially you know, if you're not using that second shifter. So you need to make sure that every part of it's tight. There is a fiber washer inside where the loose nut is, and those fiber washers is what keeps the water from escaping. So just keep in mind that we want to make sure. Now the orange cap, that actually means high performance. So it's this one in particular is a high performance tempering valve. And we use high performance tempering valves on uh, solar hot water services because uh, the water in the solar panels themselves can be very, very hot, over 100 degrees. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm adjusting the temperature. So I'm adjusting this temperature so that when it comes out at the taps, it will be 50 degrees Celsius. And that is the same with any tempering valve too. If you do want to adjust your own tempering valve temperature, then all you should have to do is make that adjustment. So once we've finished installing the tempering valve, we can turn the duo valve on the hot water service back on and then turn the water meter back on. Go back and have a look at the tempering valve, make sure there's no leaks anywhere. This is a very important stage because we're about to put an insulator over the top of it and we definitely don't want any leaks coming out because then once you put your insulator on, it's, you have to cut all your zip ties again and re-put new zip ties on. So we're better off to just make sure everything's perfect. Now this insulator acts uh, for multiple reasons. One, it prevents heat loss. Um, and two, it stops people from getting burns. Like if they touch the pipe on the outside, it will prevent a burn. Now, like I said earlier, there's some very hot water coming through. The water needs to be stored at 65 degrees Celsius inside the tank as a minimum. And because of that, this is why we install tempering valves because the, the reason is is because if we do if we store the water less than 65 degrees then bacteria can grow in the tank and that's the last thing you want for your water supply now the last thing i'm going to do is just nip off all these tags of the zip ties and there we have it we pretty much have a perfectly installed replacement tempering valve.